What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are back on the Chevelle again. We finished up the cooling system, the intercooler. We got the top end tanks and the lower end tanks done in the last episode. So if you haven't seen that yet, get caught up. We're going to be moving on to the charge piping now. We're gonna get our Garrett turbos connected to our intercooler. So in order to do that, we got the assistance of Vibrant Performance again. We have their titanium pie cuts. I haven't really messed around with their titanium yet. Just on the packaging alone, it's just showing me right away how much they care about their product. Each pie cut is individually packaged, so you know they're not gonna get any oil or any scratches or anything on it. So we're gonna start off by doing our two and a half inch charge piping from our lower end tank up to our turbo. We're gonna get that, all that laid out, and then we're gonna start laying out our headers, doing all our hot side. So the cold side, guys, is everything that's on the intercooler, your charge piping, and then your hot side is gonna be all your exhaust system stuff. So let's start getting some titanium tacked together. You might think to yourself, pie cuts are in a bunch of little pieces. How am I gonna make sense of all this and I'll be able to put it all together? Because traditionally, when you buy bends like this, you're just gonna portion it into like smaller 90s. What I like to do is I'll take the packs and I'll actually tack them together first, make little 90s. So now I have all these 90s ready and I have 45s. And if you're wondering how to get these things perfect, there's a seam on the inside because all this titanium starts out as a flat sheet of metal and then they roll it and then they laser cut it into these little pie cut shapes. So I'm gonna tack my HD flange to my 90s first. I'm gonna punch a hole in this force support. Let me get this 90 in place and then we're just gonna connect the dots. to add a quarter inch of material on the HD flange on the turbo side just to drop that bend down a little bit to make it in that hole so we have 190 there another 90 there and then a 45 so I'm gonna cut a two and three quarter stretch right now tack into place this driver side is gonna be all tacked up ready to go all we're gonna do is just transfer all of our bends over to the passenger side and try to get a nice even look for the cold side of the turbo system So we have our passenger side almost there. So we're running into a little bit of a difference in the driver's side. When we go to put this together, not really lining up. And I think the difference is the clocking here. I'm use the angle finder on this upward. So I need to be at 45 degrees. And on this guy, I am at 40 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and break the tacks on the back side here. I'm gonna reposition this and then tack it on the bench. So the charge pipes are all set. A little modification we did on the passenger side worked out. So this is all nice and level, nice and symmetrical. Threw the grill on, everything clears nice there. And you can see a lot of business going on in the background, which is pretty cool. Now that our charge pipes are done, we're gonna start welding. With titanium, you have to purge weld because the inside of the weld actually will get contaminated and turn into like some weird flaky discolorations. I use the TIG Aesthetics caps. I have a non-purge set up right now. So it's just a regulator with a single line coming into it. So what you're gonna wanna get is a double line. Set your flow rate for your TIG torch and then you're gonna set your flow rate for your purge. I usually do about five. Some people might turn it up a little higher. So once we have this swapped out, we'll go ahead and hook the line up. One end is completely open, so it vents the atmosphere. You want the argon to be flowing through the pipe. You don't want it to be capped off because then it'll build pressure. And then when you start welding this, you'll start getting backflow and the weld will start actually like backing out on you. I don't really use a smaller cup. There's a number eight that I'll use for most of the tack welding and like fabrication with uh, steel. But for titanium, I use this guy. This is the BBW from M. Furick. This is probably like a number 20. So this is gonna give you nice big gas coverage when you're welding these. Cause traditionally titanium is actually welded in a chamber, like a sandblasting cabinet. So the outside is completely covered in argon gas, but we're not aerospace. So we're not gonna be doing that today. But this cup is gonna give, it, give us the right amount of color that we're looking for. We're looking for a nice gold weld. Thank you. 
All right, so we got one down, three to go. And as you can see, we got some pretty good color. How you dictate your colors, guys, is how high your argon gas is turned up. The higher you turned it up and the more coverage you get, the more gold and actually base color you'll get. It just gets expensive because you could just bleed out your argon tank almost immediately trying to weld this stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and set up the other charge pipe, our other two and a half inch, and then we'll move on to our four inch uppers. Gold on some brushed aluminum is just perfect. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. So we're gonna go ahead and keep welding the four inch uppers, get those back in, and then we'll start laying out our downpipes. I do not have the four inch TIG Aesthetics plugs. I use the four inch piece of aluminum down at the bottom. I cut little notches so that the airline would go in, the hole right there. I left a little tiny slit up here so the argon can flow through. We're just gonna start going halves on the face, and then we'll spin it change all this tape around to get the argon gas on the other side of our little purge block down there. All right, now that we got our downpipes all finished and out of the way, we're going to be moving on to our headers. First thing I wanna do is bolt on our vibrant header flanges. These are gonna act as our base for our primaries and then our collectors. We have our two and a half inch 90 that we're gonna be using on either end to basically transition the collector into the inlet on the turbo. But there's a little bit of a communication error. We got a three inch inlet on our collector and this is two and three quarter actually. So it's a quarter inch off. Not a huge deal. I think I'm gonna get away with cutting these welds back a little bit, just slicing them and then hammer and dolly around it to get this to shrink down. So what I had to do was add another 90. I cut a quarter of a 90 bend. The reason I use this guy instead of a complete U-bend is because this one's clocked a little bit, so it's kind of like coming up and then jogging over this inner wheel well. From here, we're gonna be able to take our collector that we shrunk up and throw it about there. Let's see how close I can get the collector in there, and then we'll be able to dictate the way the header's gonna look. But for right now, I wanna do the passenger side like this first. So I make sure I get these J's looking even on both sides so that one side doesn't look different from the other or at least two different from the other. We have our collector in on this side. I'm going to have to cut the bottom out, kind of scallop this to drop the collector down just a hair. Before I go ahead and cut that, I want to fit this side in too. The mark actually on the sheet metal where I have to cut it out and I can drop them both down the exact same height and then we'll start connecting some primaries from our head flange to our collector. So we got our collectors in and they are looking saucy. We had to cut out the bottom of the fender well, like I was saying, I only dropped it down about a quarter inch, maybe a half inch, just to get these two primary runners to be able to be level with the head. We're gonna do our farthest primary. So we get a length on that guy and then we're going to be matching the length on the remaining primaries so that we have an equal length header or at least closest to an equal length that we can get. So I'm gonna start on the driver's side first because we have a lot more stuff in our way up. And I'm a firm believer in doing the difficult side first so that you can 
match the easier side because nothing's in your way. So one last thing I do before we start running primaries is make sure our collectors are even. To use a nice four foot level. Just measure off the highest point here and the highest point here. Because when you pop that hood, everything's gotta be nice and level. So you have any sort of inconsistencies, your eyes can immediately go to it. There's a thing you could do called nesting, and what you do is you allow the lower two primaries to kind of give you a guide as to where you're gonna put your other primary. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go on the inside of this valley. I wanna jog it back over this way, so I kinda come back and down and go into this number two primary here. Once that's all set, then this one's just gonna mimic it. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one thrown in, and then we'll do our last primary, and this header is done. All right, so our driver's side header is pretty much all set. I'm gonna let this chill. We're gonna go over to the passenger side, start making our primary one, and we're just gonna use this as our guide. We, we know exactly the shape, the actual order of the primary. So we have cylinder four, cylinder three, and then cylinder two and cylinder one. Once that's all done, we'll pull both headers out of the car and start building our fixture. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do in order to weld these headers up and not have them move. All right, so we got our lower two primaries all set. Now we're gonna start running our third primary back. So I'm gonna start counting my 45s here. Start running this primary down on the passenger side and make sure that we have everything situated for that. So this guy right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bend out. I wanna take this 90 and I wanna roll it up beside this one so that this kind of follows the same path as this guy. All right, we got this bad boy all tacked up. I added some additional tacks on the flange because I'm gonna have to bolt this down to the flange and the whole header's gotta support its own weight. Found this one back there, but I'm not sure if it's for the uh, coyote motor, but we can find out. All right, so our partial fixture is all done, guys. We got our quarter inch wall, two by four block steel here with our flange bolted to it. And then we have this leg that's coming up that's just holding this position here. Basically what we want this to do is just keep this sturdy so that our primaries all can go into the same spot. So we have all our primaries prepped, everything's ready to go. Now it's time to start welding. I went ahead and put a little spit shine on these. We decided to polish them. Went ahead and wiped all these down with acetone, got all of the polishing rouge off of it. That rouge will actually ruin your weld. Look how nice, just look at the color. It's gonna look awesome when it's all together. So what I wanna do now is gonna go ahead and put the fixture up and start putting these back into the collector. Start tacking them in place. Make sure it fits in the cigar. And then final weld it. You guys are so loud! really cool. All right, let's pull it out and weld it so we can finally install it because this looks awesome. All right, driver's side is done and it is looking very shiny. Whereas before it was kind of dull, didn't really do it for me. So 
When this engine bay is painted, it's gonna look pretty blinging. On top of the fact the intake manifold's polished too. So now we get to go over to the passenger side. Our final primary is all set. We got everything looking pretty even. And we got the overall look pretty similar. So we're gonna go ahead and yank this out now and basically repeat the whole process all over again. Finally time to put some blow off valves and wastegates on this turbo system. We're gonna be using the Turbo Smart 50 millimeter race port blow off valve and the Hypergate 45. So I figure we'll do our blow off valves first. You really wanna get it as close to the throttle body as possible. Cause what happens when you're building boost, it's all gonna be sitting there like a wall. So when you close that butterfly and you gotta expel that boost pressure, you want it to be right near the butterfly so that it gets just released immediately and you won't have any compressor surge issues or anything like that. So we're gonna change out our aluminum flange for a titanium one so we can weld it onto that charge piping. And then for our wastegate placement, we're gonna be putting it on the outlet on the actual bend. So all your exhaust pressure is gonna be building up right here, which is gonna be a perfect spot to put the wastegate. So it's gonna be right down in this cavity down here so that it bleeds off properly. If you put it on the inside here, You'll get some bleed off, but you might get turbo surge. So we have put it on the outside of the bend here because this is where all the flow is going to be. And we know that things are gonna go the path of least resistance. All right, so this cope will work. I'm gonna show you guys how to make another one. You could put it on the pipe and try to transfer it with a magic marker, which is pretty inaccurate or you could do the old paper trick. So take a uh, regular piece of paper, roll it around the pipe like this, like that, tape it, there you go. Now we're gonna take a razor blade. And then you're just gonna trace it. Trace the coke down. Slide this out. Put it on this guy. Exactly the same. So we'll cut this with the cutoff wheel, clean it up on the belt sander, and then these two are done. All right, so our waste gates are in. I'm pretty happy with the placement. It's right on the apex of this bend. So we're gonna get really nice low for the waste gate to be able to meter this pressure going into the turbo. And just for you guys who don't know, waste gates are what controls boost in a turbo system. In our instance, we're using external gates because this is held, this will handle a lot more power because the actual gate itself will be a lot larger than what you typically find on an internally gated turbo from like a factory car. So the only thing left to do on the system is do some actual exhaust screamer pipes, we call them, for the waste gates. So if we left it like this, you get a bunch of fire coming out of that wastegate right there and it probably burn everything up inside the engine bay. So there's a flange here, a V-band. We're gonna come out of this hole. So we'll do like a 45 to a 45. And it's just gonna come straight down right here and exhaust out into atmosphere. All right, so we got our wastegates in. Screamer pipes are all welded up. I'm really happy how that came out. Probably gonna do some more mod modifications to them uh, once we get a little further down the line, get the front end back on, get the wheels in. I don't want it burning anything up. Right now, it's just kind of a, a good guess. I'm sure it's gonna be far enough away from the wheel. As long as it's not pointing straight at it, it should be good. Passenger side as well. Everything's looking real symmetrical. As you can see, the placement is real nice and close to the turbo. So I'm really pumped on how this engine bay is coming out. It looks super mean, really aggressive, just like Cha-Ching. And this cross ram intake from Holly really looks really cool too. It's kind of like GTR-esque, but still an LS. So that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. Next episode, we're gonna be going onto the sheet metal. So I figured I'd stop it here because I gotta pull everything out in order to do all the sheet metal underneath here, clean all that out. And then we have some goodies from Ring Brothers that are gonna be put in the engine bay, as well as a couple other things. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you next time.